uh, in Cambodia, they suffered one of the worst genocides of the 20th century from 1975 to 1979 under the leadership of the Khmer Rouge, a, a radical communist group that took over the country in, in 1975. The leaders of that genocide have essentially enjoyed complete impunity for the last 25 years, but finally the United Nations and Cambodia have instituted a joint trial to try the senior leaders of the Khmer Rouge, and there are now five senior leaders uh, in custody, and there's one active trial going on right now. After the war, after the violence, many of these countries are at a loss as to how to move forward, and countries have put into effect two main mechanisms to try to promote justice. One is trials of the perpetrators. The other mechanism is what's called a truth commission in which people come forward and that they attempt to bring out the truth about what happened without actually punishing the perpetrators. And those have been the two major mechanisms to try to promote justice. Our research is an attempt to try to find out what is the effect of these justice mechanisms on the people in those countries. Cambodia right now is estimated to have less than 40 psychiatrists for the entire country. So how can you implement an individual-based model of treatment to treat large numbers of people with trauma? You can't. So some people have started to say, well, these mechanisms designed to promote justice, can they be mental health interventions? But the big question is, what is the effect of these tribunals? And no one knows. And that's why we set out to do our study to try to find out what is the effect of these tribunals. In this particular case, the study that we're talking about, what is the effect of the Khmer Rouge trials on people in Cambodia? We included all provinces in Cambodia and selected people from villages all across Cambodia. And so the team fans out using buses, cars, boats, motorcycles, and foot to try to get to the remote villages that have been selected randomly for a sampling in the study. People were very hopeful that the trials were going to promote reconciliation among Cambodians, were hopeful that the trials were going to be fair, and that they were going to be able to uh, deliver justice for the people of Cambodia. Despite having high hopes for the trial, very, very high percentage of people were concerned that the trials were going to bring back painful memories of the Khmer Rouge era. And so it does raise the possibility that mechanisms that promote justice may have an impact upon mental health. And this has significant ramifications for people in many contexts. In the United States, people who are victims of uh, criminal assault, people who are victims of terrorist attacks. Can we promote positive mental health by promoting justice there's building everywhere you go in Cambodia. Economic activity is uh, uh, thriving. So it's not a country where you go and you see just everywhere the remnants of war. They are still there. But you also see a country that's actively at work moving into the future. And I think that for me, the largest question that always comes back to me when I see those types of things is, how could it have ever happened? <laughs> How could human beings have ever done this to other human beings? The question I ask when I visit Cambodia is, will the Khmer Rouge trials, will that mechanism or might there be some other mechanism that would be needed to allow people to feel like justice has been done and be able to move forward? There'll never be closure. I think that's, that's you, you, something that painful there will never be closure for. But will there be moving on? We hope so.